So as we said, uh, this is the uh, fine, fine arts opportunities for students of any major. So if you're here and you're planning to major in music, that's great too. This is just gonna be more of a broad overview. So if you're interested in getting to know more about the College of Fine Arts and specifically, um, you know, <clears throat> any other uh, majors within our program, then you might want to consider one of our general info sessions. That was, uh, of course, a similar session that we just did. So for those that already saw that, you don't need to do that again. But this is an opportunity for those that maybe are just maybe curious about what we have to offer and don't necessarily plan on majoring within the College of Fine Arts. Go ahead and move along here. So one of the uh, one of my favorite opportunities is actually the Center for Creative Entrepreneurship. Whether you're majoring within the College of Fine Arts or not, this is a really interactive, uh, business-oriented opportunity. Uh, we offer classes in, within this program. It is a uh, open to, of course, students across all colleges. Some classes that are offered, and there are four credit classes, <clears throat> are ITD 115, which is a creative entrepreneurship class, and it's supposed to give you an intro to like an entrepreneurial mindset and help you build some skill sets uh, towards like a creative thinker, but with a business mind. As well, uh, we have the ITD 350 class, which is a women in entrepreneurship class, much, uh, very much catered to women and led by women. So you can learn strategies to overcome some of those uh, gender specific obstacles. One thing as well that was offered, is, or that's still offered and is offered weekly is a ideas lab, which is a meetup opportunity uh, Mondays uh, in the evening uh, from five to 6 p.m for students to get together with mentors and like-minded students and just flesh out kind of a think tank sort of a, a setup really to you know, put their heads together, two heads, three heads are better than one. <clears throat> There's also a speaker series where folks are invited, creative leaders, artists, business owners in the area. Um, if anybody knows Kendra Scott, she's actually teaching within this program and she's a local Austinite, <clears throat> excuse me. And uh, ultimately just an opportunity to hear from professionals in the field already doing what you may be wanting to do. And last but not least, uh, this was a, an, an event that was offered last year for the first time. Not sure if it's going to be offered this fall, but it is something that was offered. It's a three-day startup weekend. Basically, students came together and they learned how to basically put a business together over a 72-hour period. It's a free workshop. Food's provided to all these events. So really great opportunities just to get those creative juices flowing if you're interested in business as well. And this is our, one of our other opportunities. And I'm, as an overview, giving um, the broad, cultural-wide opportunities, irrespective of the department. All of my uh, fellow colleagues are going to be going more in detail about opportunities that are for specific departments. So this is more, more general. And one of them is having a minor in arts management and administration, very much catered towards business and arts, similar to that program that I mentioned prior. <clears throat> so if you perhaps are majoring in business, or if not, and you want to just pick up a, more of a management or administrative deg um, degree to add to your primary program, it is a 15 credit minor, and you would add that after completing 30 credit hours as an undergrad. So that's roughly uh, 10, uh, five classes one semester, five classes another semester for a total of 10. So you can apply as a, you know, a general major, and then go, up, go ahead and <clears throat> excuse me, add your minor after the fact about a year into your program. And this curriculum, as I mentioned, is very much catered towards business and fine arts, kind of brings together different career opportunities within the commercial, nonprofit, and public arts sectors. And as well, during this process and during this minor, you can develop different managerial techniques and skills. Some uh, careers that might come out of this would be production in Broadway, being a concert hall director, maybe being an independent producer, or artist manager, or even an arts and education director. Those are, of course, not an all-encompassing list, but just some of those examples for you. And lastly, of course, during this program and, and throughout the College of Fine Arts as well, there's different internship opportunities, but this particular minor has one built within. So if you maybe were majoring in something else and wanted to pick up this minor, you would have an a integrated uh, internship to go along with this. And that's pretty much the minor there. And so before I hand it off, of course, if you have any questions, we want to direct you to our chat. So down at the bottom of your screen, you should see a little chat button drop any questions there, but keep in mind, we will have a full Q&A towards the end. All of our departments are gonna go ahead and present in order, starting with James representing the Department of Art and History, and I'll be checking out the chat for any questions. So don't hesitate, but keep in mind, we will be having that Q&A at the end. Thank you so much. All right, thank you, Devin. So hi again, everybody, I'm James, and our Department of Art and Art History is a large department that encompasses three different kind of major programs that would include art education, art history, and studio art. Um, in the case of art education, you do need to actually pursue a BFA in, in art education in order to, to pursue that field. 
But if you're interested in studio art or art history, we do have two wonderful minors that are available for students. And so those minors would include 15 credit hours, which uh, just as a ballpark, it's about five classes that you would need to take in order to earn a minor. And you can pursue a minor in art history or studio art, regardless of whatever particular major you might have at UT. Um, going on to the, the next slide here, I've pulled kind of samples of courses that you could pursue through these two minors. So if you pursue studio art, the great thing is we have a vast array of, of kind of different art making and different media that you can pursue. And so you're not just minoring in one area, like taking um, several classes in, in drawing or, or print, but you're choosing a selection of, of different media to pursue as a studio art minor. Um, then for art history students, you can see on the screen, I'm not going to read them out for you here, but we've got just a really compelling and, and pretty remarkable array of different perspectives on art history. And so this is a great way for you to hone your critical skills to learn about different art practices and to re reflect on, on what that means in, in your lives today. Um, something I would add about any student that pursues a minor in the Department of Art and Art History is it kind of gives you an in. And so it gives you an opportunity to learn more about different events that are happening. Because as you can imagine, at a place like UT, we have a lot of guest artists coming in. And those are often open to a variety of individuals at UT. And, and minoring um, within the department is a great way to kind of be an insider and to uh, learn about a lot of the great activities that are happening. And then lastly, uh, one of the true joys about being at the University of Texas is the array of kind of cultural opportunities for art students. And so again, these are examples of the galleries at the University of Texas that you can peruse and explore or attend events regardless of your particular major. So we're home not just to one, but to two uh, separate art galleries that are dedicated to exploring the art of Africa and the African diaspora. We've got the Blanton Museum of Art, which is one of the, the country's largest art museums on a university campus. Uh, the Courtyard Gallery is, is part of the courtyard in, in UT's own hotel. And uh, UT alumni are actually featured in that art gallery, which is pretty cool. We have the Harry Ransom Center, which is pictured on the screen here. And this is one of the world's most important humanities research centers. It's, if you walk in, one of the first things you would actually encounter is the world's very first photograph. Um, but this is a place that has a lot of archival material, a lot of art, uh, and, a, and just a really great place to research and study. UT is home to Landmarks Public Art, which is a program by which a portion of, of every um, uh, new construction project goes into an arts program. And so you can see fabulous uh, sculptures out and about on the campus. And if any of you do, you know, if you are in the Austin area, um, I know that many of you are not in the Austin area, but if you are or you find yourself on it, we actually have a self-guided tour that you could do now, even under the pandemic, um, to, to see the outdoor sculptures within the Landmarks collection. And then lastly, the department is home to the Visual Arts Center, which is a gallery space that's designed to be more experimental, uh, to, br to bring in artists that are taking risks. Um, sometimes it's featuring UT students, sometimes it's featuring a guest artist, but all of these things are available to students of any major to go and explore. Thanks, James. Sorry, I had to unmute myself. Um, so again, my name is Natasha Small, and I'm the admissions representative for the Department of Theater and Dance. We're going to dive a little bit into those non-major opportunities. I wanted to give first an overview of the uh, programs that we offer, so you have an idea of the kinds of things you could study even as a non-major and get involved with, um, uh, like maybe with our student orgs. Um, so we have a Bachelor of Fine Arts in Acting. Uh, we have a Bachelor of Fine Arts in Dance and Dance Education. We also have a Bachelor of Fine Arts in Theater Education. The education portion means that it comes with a certificate to teach, right? So if you're interested in teaching theater or dance, those are good options. And then we have a BA in theater and dance. This is our most popular double major option because it offers six different emphases. <laughs> so you kind of can pick a track and then it's like choose your own adventure, right? So if you chose, you're like, I want to be an actor, but I also want to be 
um, a journalist or something. You could do um, the BA in performers process as a double major, maybe with your journalism major. Um, and usually students can fit those, both of those majors in within four years, right? So the BA is just more flexible for students who wanna actively study two degrees. Um, and then you can tailor this program based on your interests, right? So you're like, well, I like to act, so that's what I wanna do, but I also like directing, so I could take a directing class or a playwriting class. Um, it's a little less restrictive than like a Bachelor of Fine Arts program for anybody that's interested in double majoring. I'll also say when you apply to UT Austin, you'll apply as one major, if this is something you're considering. So you'll apply your first choice major, and then during your freshman year, you'll apply to your second choice major. Um, so you would officially start taking classes in both during your sophomore year. Um, and that's just kind of how it works. So some of our non-major opportunities include auditioning for productions, student organizations, and then non-majors classes. So auditioning for productions. Our main stage productions are open casting. So actually anybody on campus can audition for our main stage shows. Um, we did have last year, last fall, um, we did Spring Awakening the musical and the lead for that um, play was an advertising major. <laughs> he just takes non-major classes and started getting involved and he auditioned and got the lead role. Um, so it is pretty competitive. I mean, we've had upwards of like 400 people auditioning for a season, right? Um, but we're trying to prepare you guys for the real world. So if that's something you're interested in, definitely want to check those auditions out. You can also audition for student organization projects. Um, so if you're like, yeah, I want to do it, but more like for fun, or I want to try directing, you know, you can pitch um, to a student org and, and try to produce or help produce one of their shows. Uh, in the spring semester, a couple years ago, our student orgs did 13 productions on their own. This is outside of main stage, this is outside of our new works festival, it was insane. <laughs> so there's just a lot of opportunity and they need people to be involved. Um, student organizations will look at a list. Um, they're changing every now and then, like every few years there's a, there's a couple new ones, but you could join a student org as a non-major. And then non-major classes are also an opportunity. I'm gonna go ahead and go to that slide. So this is an example of some of the non-major courses that you can easily access. Um, so if you're a dancer or a mover, um, intro to technique classes are easily accessible. We have a lot of non-major options each semester. Um, fundamentals of acting, intro to theater. Um, so a good way to get involved is to take one of these classes and then you get to know people, you get to know your professor. And then like in future semesters, if you wanna continue taking classes, um, you'll just email the instructor on record and you can get permission if they have extra room. So that's how some non-majors get into like upper level or TND specific courses. So I know you may look at this and you're like, I don't know, this might be interesting, um, but you can definitely like graduate into more upper level courses if you're, if you're committed. Um, and then some of our student organizations, um, this is just a list of what we have that are active right now. <laughs> um, and some of these like Giggle Pants, Improv Comedy Troupe, that's actually not sponsored by our department, but a lot of our people are heavily involved, right? It's, a, um, it's an improv comedy troupe. So yeah, there's just a lot of opportunities. We make a whole lot of new work, a lot of weird work, and we do a lot of classical work too. So um, if you were interested in pitching a show for main stage or for a student org, um, you could do that. You don't have to be a major to pitch a show. And if your show gets picked, then you would be helping uh, to produce. So yeah, we can chat more if you'll have questions later. Awesome. Thanks, Natasha. Um, so hey everybody, my name is David Rezaei. If I haven't chatted with you before, I'm the admissions rep for the School of Design and Creative Technologies. Uh, just as a recap for those um, who are curious, as far as the degree we actually offer in the school, we offer a BA, Bachelor of Arts, and a Bachelor of Fine Arts in Design. And then we also offer a Bachelor of Science in Arts and Entertainment Technologies. So those are the formal degree programs that we offer. And we're going to go to the next slide. Awesome. So one really awesome opportunity for any student at UT, and I really recommend no matter what degree you end up going toward, you checking out is our Center for Integrated Design. So the design department does house the Center for Integrated Design on campus. Um, and it was actually created by our current assistant dean, so Doreen Lorenzo, and she was the former CEO of Frog Design Company, a big, large design company uh, that works uh, nationally and internationally. Uh, they were pretty famous for working with uh, Steve Jobs on the early Macs. So dead, definitely really big into tech and really big into design. Um, but basically, it's an opportunity for students at UT to learn design thinking and how you can integrate that into different 
career paths into different industries because really design is everywhere, right? Design is the laptops we're using, the software we're using, the color of posters, a chair, right? It's really everywhere. So there are always people that need design skills in any industry. So it's open to all UT majors. Some example courses that you'll see are like intro to design thinking. So you'll learn a lot about the design thinking process and introduction to that. Intro to prototyping. So the idea of like how to develop rapid sort of uh, new versions of products or new versions of solutions. Designing with data, designing with AI. We have a lot of classes that really do bridge into different areas like healthcare or architecture and how design plays into all those areas. And one really unique thing is that this Center for Integrated Design has really, really strong partner um, industry partners. So as you can see, IBM, the tech company, USAA is a design studio, Gensler, a design and architecture studio here in Austin, and Argo Design. These are our partners that we've had. Um, some of their um, staff have actually like taught classes in the Center for Integrated Design, but also usually each year we offer about one or two studio-based classes that partner with one of these industries. And so actually, if you apply to that class, you can actually take the class at their particular studio in Austin and actually work on design projects like with those professionals, even as a non-design student. So that's like really amazing. And I just tell people that I've, I, I know of students who like say they were a plan two major or another major on campus, and they also took classes in the Center for Integrated, Integrated Design. Ultimately, from the work that they did in the Center for Integrated Design, they ended up getting a job basically from their connections from that class. So one of the students, they uh, were part of the IBM um, class and they ended up getting hired by IBM when they graduated and they weren't even a design major. So again, it showcases like how you can really build these entrepreneurial and design skills, even as a non uh, major or non design student at UT. And if you want to skip forward to the next one. Cool. So as I said, um, there are a couple ways to get certificates at UT. Um, there's a particular program called Bridging Disciplines Program Certificate. It's about a 19 credit hour certificate. And these are just two that are re related to design or arts, entertainment, technologies interests. But there's a ton of them that you can get at UT. So depending on what interests you have and you want to kind of cross disciplines and kind of branch out from your major, these uh, certificates to the undergraduate School of Undergraduate Studies can be really great. So there are two. One's called the Design Strategy certificate. That's one that's comprised of mostly a lot of those Center for Integrated Design classes. So those classes that I just talked about, most of the classes you'll need to take for that certificate will be in that, uh, will be in that program. Uh, and then it all kind of culminates into a research or experiential learning project. So it's either an internship or a research or a thesis that you've done or a collaborative project related to your certificate. The digital arts and media, so for those interested in arts and entertainment technologies classes, the digital arts and media certificate do, is mostly comprised of AET classes, also some radio, television, and film and computer science classes. So if you just want to kind of get uh, immersed a little bit into how digital arts and media play into your particular degree, you can definitely pursue the digital arts and media certificate through the Bridging Disciplines program. So definitely recommend checking those out. I'll link them after my section's over just so y'all have the links and can explore other kind of certificates, but definitely keep an eye on those too if you're interested in possibly getting exposed to design or AET classes as a non-major. And then as a last uh, little bit of a wrap up here is that SDCT student org. So again, kind of similar to what Natasha said, the, all these orgs aren't necessarily sponsored by our school, but a lot of our students um, are participants in it. So AIGA, that's actually a, um, a graphic design professional organization. So it's the UT chapter of uh, graphic designers, um, really active. Obviously a lot of our design students are in it, but it's open to any student with an interest in graphic design. Uh, they're really active. They had a poster making competition during COVID-19 during quarantine where students got to design posters from home kind of modeled off for COVID-19. It was really cool. You can definitely check them out on Instagram, AIGA at UT Austin. So just checking out some of their work, but a great organization to get uh, involved in. Design for America is really unique, open to all majors, but a lot of AET and design majors uh, kind of lead it. It's kind of a design studio run by students to basically take on community projects or UT projects as a design challenge. So one of the examples that they do is that they fully run their studio themselves. They, uh, they take on their own projects. And uh, one of the projects they did last year was they actually paired with all the Design for America chapters all across the nation to actually redesign processes for the YMCA. So they actually were tackling like a project for the YMCA. So it's really cool. Um, and it's really big about immersive design and how you use design thinking to solve real community problems and challenges. EGADS, which is in the photo here, is Electronic Game Developer Society. So basically anything and everything about creating and making a game. So if you're interested in gaming and any concept, whether it's the coding aspect, concept art aspect, just wanting to kind of 
mess around and do a game jam with folks, you can join EGADS, um, Any Majors Open. And uh, EGADS actually just had their own game jam, which is usually like a week long or three day long kind of like game jam where students are put in teams to create their own video games. And they kind of launch the video games at the end, showcasing it. And they just completed their last game jam for UT. Uh, I believe it was this weekend. And you can actually, if you want to find out more about that and just see examples of their work, you can also uh, look up EGADS on UT's Horns Link website, which is kind of the student org website to kind of find out more information about different student orgs you get involved in. We also have Women in Gaming, which is an affinity group for uh, women who want to get into the gaming industry or non-binary folks. Long, Longhorn Gaming, if you're interested in competitive esports, so if you're really great at Super Smash Brothers or you're really great at uh, Overwatch or any of those, you can try out for the teams. They compete nationally. They're really pretty well respected. Um, I can see Jordan's nodding their heads. They seem pretty interested in that. Definitely checking out Longhorn Gaming. Um, they have a lot of really cool events and competitions, so definitely. Um, they also just put on like fun Smash like hangouts where you can just uh, go on their Twitch um, and basically um, play that game. Um, they definitely do have Super Smash Brothers, so if you're interested in that, for sure. Um, and then one last one I'll mention is Texas Theme Park Engineering Group. Again, it's not sponsored by SDCT, but a lot of our students, especially interested in experience design or projection lighting interactivity, sometimes uh, they might be interested in this particular group. It's basically any students that are interested in the engineering or creative aspect of theme parks. So if that interests you, Disney, uh, big theme park attractions, a lot of our AT students do uh, projects related to those kind of experiences. So this could be a really cool club to get involved into. Hey everybody, I'm Sarah Borchardt. I'm the Assistant Director for Admissions over in the Butler School of Music and so glad that you're here. Um, so in the Butler School, you can see here our major areas of study and, and like all my colleagues have been saying, this gives you an idea of what types of coursework we, we offer to our music majors. So performance, music studies is our very fancy way of saying music education, coursework in composition, jazz, and a Bachelor of Arts in music degree. So opportunities for non-majors, although we do not offer a minor, there's actually a lot you can still do within the Butler School of Music, and we definitely invite you to take advantage of all these different opportunities. So in terms of coursework, we have what we call unrestricted and restricted classes. So unrestricted classes mean that they're open to any student at UT. So you can see there all the different topics that we offer unrestricted. Um, and the great thing about these classes is that except for the very last uh, topic area, area studies in ethnomusicology, all of these other classes meet your uh, visual and performing arts core requirements. So every student at UT needs to take at least one three hour visual and performing arts class. So if you're interested in music, definitely pick a music class that, that fits that category. And you can see there's a lot of different options. Um, some examples under these topics, so topics in popular music can include music of African Americans, history of rock music, jazz appreciation, history of film music, music of the Americas includes music of Mexico and the Caribbean, music of Latin America, um, and then area studies in ethnomusicology includes classes like American music, music of India, Black perspectives in jazz, um, an introduction to music of the Middle East, music of South Africa, modern music in Africa. So there's, there's some class that's gonna meet your interest that we offer to non-music majors. Um, then we have, of course, the classes that are restricted to our music students. However, um, we, our faculty are really great about giving non-majors permission to take those classes once all of our music students have registered. So if you're thinking, um, you know, I'm really, I'd really rather take um, the freshman music theory course. That might be possible for you. You can request permission from the faculty member teaching the class. There's almost always extra seats, so you may be able to get in that your freshman year. If you're interested in composing, um, our beginning composition class almost always allows non-music majors um, into it. And even at times, we'll have non-music majors progress through the composition sequence and take one-on-one -on -one composition lessons with our faculty. So um, it, it never hurts to ask if you can get into one of those restricted classes. We also offer lessons to non-music majors on many, many instruments. So if you play trumpet in your high school band, but you want to major in engineering, the good news is that you can still take trumpet lessons here at UT Austin. Um, more often than not, these uh, lessons are going to be with a teaching assistant. That's someone who's here earning their doctoral degree in music. So they're still going to be an excellent, excellent teacher. 
You get once a week lessons for usually 30 uh, minutes to an hour. You can make use of the Butler School practice facilities. Um, it's just a really great way to keep up. Some of these areas do require you to have prior experience on that instrument, but there are some areas that uh, require no prior experience. So if you're thinking, well, I'd really love to learn um, the cello, you can go and look on our website and see if that class allows brand new students into it. Um, most of the group lesson classes are for brand new students. So if you're interested in learning classical guitar, piano or violin, definitely check out those classes. And what's really cool about lessons is that you register for it just like a math class or a science class and you get a grade for it so if you're really excited about playing the piano guess what you have a one credit class where you can you know do well and hopefully get an a we have many many ensembles so here you get an idea of what we offer our ensembles uh, listed on this page are open to any student at UT Austin, so you do not have to be a music major to audition for any of these. Um, our ensemble auditions normally happen during the first week of class, so this is not something that you would audition for during your application to UT Austin. You would apply to UT Austin into whatever major you're interested in. Um, hopefully you're accepted, and even more hopefully you decide to choose us and come to UT you'll audition for these ensembles the very first week of class. The one exception is going to be um, the Longhorn Band, and we'll go to the next slide. So the Longhorn Band um, is open to non-music majors. It's actually um, upwards of 90% non-music majors. The only music majors that are required to be in the marching band are those pursuing music education. Most of the students in the Longhorn Band are actually engineering majors, so that's a fun fact. Um, it's about 300 students, so it's a really big group. They have a really large drum, Big Bertha, which you can see behind me um, in my background, and they perform at all uh, UT football games. So the whole band performs at the home games. Um, they're still performing even now. I'm not quite sure what their setup is, if it's sm a smaller band or the full band, but they are still performing at the football games. Um, a smaller band will travel to the out-of-state games, so that would usually be like the section leaders, if you're familiar with that terminology from your high school band. Everybody goes to the Red River Rivalry, which is a tongue twister for me, but everybody goes up to uh, the Cotton Bowl for that game. And then traditionally, the entire band will perform um, at the bowl game, and we've been lucky enough to go to a bowl game almost every year, so you can count on that. Last year, the band spent New Year's Eve in San Antonio, and I heard it was a really great time. Um, and then there's other performances that can be anything from pep rallies to halftime shows with the Longhorn Alumni Band. Um, so as I mentioned, they have a different process for their auditions. You audition for them um, over the summer. So you're going to, once you know that you're coming to UT, you can go onto the LHB website, and I'll be sharing some links later, and fill out their um, prospective member form. Then you'll get instructions on how to submit your audition video and that will be reviewed and pending passing that audition video phase you'll be invited to attend a marching clinic. There's various marching clinics um, at different dates, different times, all throughout the summer. And then if you pass through the marching clinic, you come to band week, which is the week before classes start and that's where you learn a bunch of drill and a bunch of music and you get it memorized and you get it out on the field and then you're ready to play at the uh, first game, which is usually within a week or two of classes starting. So it's a really fast process. Um, Longhorn Band is also the only way you can get a music scholarship if you're not a music major. So they have their own uh, pool of scholarship funds that even freshmen um, are eligible for and you can apply through that for that through the Longhorn Band. Um, that's, that's all I've got for music. I don't think anyone's after me. Thank you.